Here are the torches. As you can see, this is all coralline algae. That's the skeleton that's just left of that. All these hammers over here. Remember everybody, in a previous video when I mentioned that we got a major update coming to the tank? Well, here it is. Well, here is the update on the tank. What a sad, sad sight. So sad. Oh, this is so upsetting. As you can see, the tank is bare. Oh, this really is not good. All we have in here are a couple flower rock anemones. There's another one that usually hides down in there, but that is it. Yeah, what a sad, sad scene. Now that you guys saw the tank from afar, let's do a deep dive and look at the condition of the tank. Now looking at the tank, what you can see here is this right here is where all of the torch coral were. Let's take a look. And we come over here to the torches. As you can see, everything is looking pretty good. That guy, a little shrunken up, might be going bathroom or something. Not 100% sure, but we'll see. As you were able to see, this was a beautiful corner of the tank with all those torch corals. But yes, they are gone. Now over in this area here, there was the scolies here. And then I had those few here. If you look up close there, that's just the skeleton that's left. That's the skeleton that's just left of that. And the other ones I had already pulled out because these ones were kind of surviving. But this is gone. Here's what it looked like before. We got a couple scolies. This guy, I'm going to have to glue him down. That one scully ain't doing too hot. What a sad, sad sight. That was beautiful there. Now, if you look right over here, this is where I had the blastos. You can see that they are gone. Let's look at what it was like before. We got the blastos. Again, another sad, sad sight. These guys are gone. This one was holding on, but did not end up making it. Let's see over here. This corner was where I had the hammers. Let's take a look right now before we get moving on with some of the video so as you can see they are doing well we got all these hammers over here doing fantastic as you can see all the hammers are gone all of them the one that was here all of these up here all gone there's one skeleton left over there but just gone absolutely gone the trackies remember this guy this neon green trackie right here this tracky well so what a beautiful piece it's look at that gone now remember the one i had over here that one's gone i had those lobos you can see that one just got a smith i mean it's just been receding and uh it's basically it's gone you know there's a little bit left of it receding that was another scully but look at that all gone now remember those awesome a cans i added all right, so check it out. Here are the corals that we added to the tank. So we got this insanely beautiful A-can. We got that A-can. We got that A-can. We got that A-can. And that A-can. Look at that one back there. Little bit left, but it's all gone. They all are just gone. Remember down there? Gone. Let's zoom back. Remember all the A-cans? They all, they're, they all died. I mean, I can't even tell you how many thousands of dollars that I lost in coral in this tank. It is just beyond depressing. I mean, I, you know what I mean? It's just like you look at that and go, all that, all that coral is gone. I mean, it's like, that's a tough pill to swallow when you have all of that coral that was thriving and doing awesome and then they just die. I tell you, this was a rough, rough, rough one. Now that we looked at everything in the tank, there's another thing up close that I want to show you in the tank. So this is what I wanted to show you guys. You can see this purple here and this red and stuff. This is all coralline algae. Look at, look at this piece, that piece. There's this one. We look up here on the back. There's quite a bit on the back there. Some growing on the glass down over in here. Let's swing around. 
Again, look at all of this red coralline algae that's been growing on these rocks. Now let's go and swing up over here. Just look at all of the little purple and the little red spots that you can see throughout the, look at all these on the top. All of these on the top. Look at those pieces there on the glass, on the overflow, same thing. Now, some of them are kind of gone. They grow and then they kind of go away, but on the rocks, they stay. I mean, look at all of this on top of the rocks here. There's definitely a healthy element in this tank. I mean, look at all this. Look at all that red algae, the purple algae. I mean, there's coralline algae all over the place. Look at that, there's three spots there. Look at all these spots on this. Let's see where else. Right over here. Let's go look at that piece right there by the flower rock dam. So it's, and again on the glass, on the back sections, if we look down here, look at all this coralline algae growing in the sump. I gotta clean that down there. But look at all that. And the flower rock anemones are doing well in here. There's the one that's over here, that one, and this one. And again, there's another one that always goes down over there. But the flower rock anemones are doing good too. So I got coralline algae growing all over the rocks, down in the sump over here. But then my corals are dying. So we're going to sit and talk about some of the research that I was doing and some of the tests that I was doing to get myself a clearer picture on what the issue was let's take some video of the fish while we talk about what happened so what happened in this tank that i know from testing is i did have nutrient spikes in the tank so i had high nitrates and i had some high phosphates now i was talking to a lot of other reefers out there that now this guy needs some more food he's a little bit skinny right now but uh, I was talking to some other reefers out there and they have had their systems with higher nitrate and with some phosphates with no issues. See, the thing is, is reefs are all about stability. It's not necessarily about chasing numbers versus chasing stability. So anyway, what I do know is I had higher nitrate and the phosphates, I think, is what did the tank in or part of what did the tank in because... They were high. I think I was getting readings of um, 0.18 and I think at one point it was like 0.2 something and you're supposed to be at like 0.05. So I had a massive, massive spike and I know that was a contributing factor to the tank. Now, while I was figuring all that out, the tank still had coral in it that were doing okay. Again, sometimes it takes coral a while to not make it. So th they could have been shocked at that point in time. But what I did was I tested the water, I did water changes, I was getting that phosphate down to a much more acceptable state. And again, there was still coral living in here and doing okay. And I actually noticed some of the coral that was receding was coming back. They were starting to fluff back up because we got those nutrients down. So that was part of the issue. Now, when I started having all of that under control, actually, let's take a look at something down here in the sump. So, we're talking about nutrient exports. So what I have here uh, is three filter socks. Got to make sure that I clean those more often as in change them and then wash them. Then I have the skimmer here that does a really good job pulling out a lot of waste. You can just see how brown and gross that water is. So I know it does a good job. Then we also have the algae scrubber that runs to help clean the tank of nutrients right it helps export those nutrients so i've always had the skimmer and i set this up to assist so now it's just going to be up to me doing more water changes um, and making sure that my socks are clean more often and whatnot with those methods of nutrient export along with having to do water changes you know things are going to be okay with the tank but i was still having issues again i've had reefers that i've spoke with that have had higher nitrates and have had those phosphates up versus like the the typical 0.05 or less and whatnot and their tanks have been fine so mine was within range uh, i actually went to reef to reef and i had uh a 
post on there about what's going on, posted all my tests, uh, multiple tests over time and whatnot. And a lot of the reefers were, were stumped. They couldn't understand with where the numbers were, why I was losing coral. So somebody over some time said, hey, what are, where's your salinity at? And I'm thinking, well, I know it's 1.025 to 1.026. That's what I mix it at, ETC, you know? Check out that beautiful yellow tang. What a beauty. Sunshine from Hawaii right there. But anyway, so I ended up testing the salinity in the tank. And what I got to tell you shocked me. The salinity was 1.028, which I tested with a refractometer. The one that you put the drop, look in the light. Like I got the old school one to try out because something wasn't right. And lo and behold, the Hannah Checker was registering point uh one 1.026 or 1.025 and the hydrometer or not the hydrometer the refractometer was registering 1.028 and i calibrated it like you're supposed to and everything so boom there you go salinity was high not good worked on getting that down the other thing was my alkalinity kept climbing no matter what i did it kept climbing and kept climbing and kept climbing and I wasn't adding nothing, was not adding anything. My magnesium was high, my calcium was high. So I eventually ended up switching to a new salt. I am doing uh, Brightwell Neomarine and um, hoping that that's going to help. Uh, the levels on there are a little bit better to help bring these levels to a more stable level. But those were some of the contributing factors, I believe, along with the higher nitrate and phosphate to why I lost everything what a total bummer all of that coral dying oh my gosh um really at a loss for words you know we got to do something to get that thing going up more if you guys could hear my dogs always barking outside someone must be outside but um yeah what a what a bummer um the journey for coral has not been as successful as i would like it to be gotta figure out some things and fine-tune some processes to see what we're gonna do but i had to share it with everybody you know i don't this channel is about everything the good and the bad the ugly whatever you want to call it you know um it's about that transparency i feel like i have done that in the past and just you guys needed to know what happened to the tank and uh, I did in a couple of videos back mention that we have a big uptake coming. Unfortunately, it's not a good one. Uh, but anyway, your guys' support is awesome. If you guys can comment down below um, and like the video, all of your guys' engagement will help push this video. Um, and that would be super awesome. Also thinking of changing my channel name. Um, it's going to be a slow process if we do so. Comment down below if you think I should. Suggestions, all that other stuff. Again, this is a process that if I do it, it's going to take time. I don't want to just change it because then people are going to go, well, where did Paul go? Um, other big YouTubers have changed their names before. So, um, you know, again, I'm looking for more relevancy to the content. But enough of that. Thanks again for tuning in, everybody. I hope to see you guys on the next one. We'll talk to you soon. Stay tanked.